Good morning, everyone. I'll... Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Chandrakant. So we'll discuss about apogee endoscopy today. Uh, overview of the session, we know about history, when to do an endoscopy, how is the procedure performed, to the findings observed on endoscopy. And coming to the history of endoscopy, uh, this is a very quick and uh, relatively safe procedure. The first endoscope was designed in 1806. What is the reason uh, why do we do endoscopy is investigations, confirmation and uh, treatment. Endoscopy can also be used to remove tumors and polyps from the digestive tract. So what are the three main reasons for carrying out endoscopy? If the individual is experiencing vomiting, abdominal pain, abdominal fullness, stomach ulcer, difficulty swallowing, gastrointestinal bleeding, loss of appetite and loss of weight, you have to do endoscopy. And to confirmation of a diagnosis like biopsy, to confirm a diagnosis of a cancer, treatment to stop bleeding. So we'll know about uh, the procedure, EGD procedure. The doctor will conduct a physical examination before the endoscopy. And uh, it is very important to discuss all the current medications and previous procedures the patient has underwent before like surgery. And patients should fast for eight to 12 hours before the procedure. It's a daycare procedure. So the patient lies in left lateral position and a local anesthetic uh, lignocaine was given, lignocaine spray is given into the mouth and mouth gag is placed uh, to safeguard uh, the lips and the mouth. Endoscope is gently inserted into the back of the mouth and it goes and it dips into the pharynx. As we can see here, the endoscope goes in this fashion. It takes about four to five minutes for undiagnostic procedures. During the endoscope, we can visualize the foot pipe and also the ruga in the stomach. You can see the endoscope, which has a light and also a camera, which you can be visualized. So coming to the foot pipe or the esophagus issue, sometimes there can be foreign body impaction and the footballers got impacted here. This is a fish bone which got impacted here. And this is a button battery and tablets which got impacted here. We can use specialized instruments to remove the bolus which is impacted. And because of the reflux, uh, acid reflux, there can be erosions at lower part of the esophagus. And uh, these are the increasing severity of grades of uh, esophagitis due to reflux. So this can be uh, classified when we do an endoscopy. This is an esophageal tumor. You can see a growth almost involving the entire circumference of the esophagus, and which is also bleeding with ulceration. This is an esophageal tumor. The biopsies will be taken from them to know if it is a tumor or if it is an infection. What is this lesion? This is subepithelial lesion. This is, what is subepithelial lesion? The lesion is inside the wall of the foot pipe. So we can take biopsies from this and we can see what it is. And coming to the stomach issue, every day we uh, listen this word gastritis from the medical and non-medical personnel. What is this? Is the inflammation of the stomach uh, uh, and the lining, the mucosal lining of the stomach. What are the complaints? Complaints include stomach pain, heartburn, nausea or vomiting sensation, belching or burping. We can see in this one, the healthy mucosa of the inner skin is rose color, whereas here it is red color appearance is seen. And erosive gastritis, uh, when you do an endoscopy, you can see if it is involving the entire stomach or if it is uh, restricted to a part of the stomach, like in the upper part or in the lower part. Sometimes, uh, it can be because of the ulcerations also. We can see the ulcers in the foot pipe and ulcers in the stomach and ulcers in the small bowel. So peptic ulcer disease, the main causes are H. pylori bacteria and painkillers, anesthetes, which causes ulcers in the stomach and also in the duodenum. We can see the ulcers in the stomach here and also in the duodenum. And patients will complain of pain abdomen and vomiting after food intake, uh, typically in a gastric ulcer. 
and whereas in Dion Nell ulcer, they also complain of pain in between the uh, meals. Uh, so these are the complaints. This is a stomach which is showing uh, subepithelial tumors. We can see uh, tumors here, here, and these are the colonic tumors. These are all subepithelial tumors, the tumors which are uh, lying below the mucous membranes. These are subepithelial tumors. It is very important to take biopsy from this tumor to know if it is a benign or a malignant thing. Uh, in this image, you can see a growth here. This is a normal stomach, and uh, we can see a growth here. This growth we can see, this growth, and it is bleeding from here, from the ulceration. The growth is ulcerated and it is causing bleeding here. So this is probably cancer and uh, endoscopy with biopsies will be required uh, to find out the reason. Sometimes H. pylori infection can also cause a similar growth. So what are all these stages? This is a cancer in the initial stages. As the cancer is going, the tumor is going inside the ball like this, like this, and it is going to the adjacent structures or nearby structures. So in addition to this, uh, many liver uh, disease patients, they can have varices. These are the varices. These are the dilated veins here. These are in the foot pipe, the foot pipe where the foot goes, these are the esophageal varices. And we also have a fundal varices here, which are located in the stomach. You can see the bleeding, they're pumping blood, you can bleeding, and we can use endoscopy to diagnose this one, not only to diagnose, but also to stop the bleeding, we can uh, give treatment. In addition to that, there are other mucosal abnormalities in patients with liver disease, like portohypertensive gastropathy, where you can see here, uh, there is a snake skin uh, appearance of the mucosa with blood oozing from them. This is portohypertensive gastropathy. And there is treatment for this. And this is GAVE. We can see dilated vessels. This is called GAVE. Uh, and we can give laser treatment and stop bleeding in this case. In some patients, when there is ulcer at this point where the stomach and the small bowel joins, it can cause narrowing of the lumen. This is called gastric outlet obstruction. Patient will present with pain, abdomen, and vomiting. And we can use the scope to dilate this narrowed area. And we can also place a stent over this area so that the food can go into the small bowel. So what is this atrophic gastritis? Atrophic gastritis is there is a long-standing inflammation because of the H. pylori. You can see there is a much less inflammation and here there is a lot of inflammation. There's atrophy and intestinal metaplasia. And uh, so in this case, treating the H. pylori will cause a disappearance of this uh, inflammation and patient will be normal. This is the starting part of the small bubble where you can see the first part of the small bubble. There is ulceration, circumferential ulceration. And this ulceration will cause bleeding and it should be treated. That's for this uh, session. And